What is going on you guys? Welcome back for another Witcher 3 video. So I have some mid-game tips for you. Now if you've seen my previous video I've done on tips and tricks for beginning or returning players that you know maybe have not played the game for a while, it certainly has helped out quite a few and I hope it has helped out a lot of you that have seen it. If you have not seen it, I will link it down in the description for you guys to go check out. But if you are new to the channel and would like to support the channel, consider subscribing, you guys. If you enjoy the video, a thumbs up will be appreciated. And don't be afraid to drop a comment down below and help each other out or if you have any questions. So let's just jump right into these tips for a mid-game guide. <laughs> So first tip I have for you guys, many of you probably could have already have guessed it, is of course money. Acquiring as much money as you possibly can is one of the most important things. By selling 60 sheepskins, wolf pelts, or just by dismantling seashells into pearls, things like that to sell and earn coin. But some of the best ways to get coin are from out adventuring, finding treasures, looting bandit camps, monster nests, and smuggler catches, which you'll be able to find a lot of in the Skellig Isles, believe me. Now, there are boring farming methods such as killing cows and then meditating to responding more cows to kill over and over again. Fast way to earn some coin, but gets boring fast, unless you have nothing else better to do than knock yourself out. But then selling all of what you've collected for lootable items that you have hoarded hopefully that you don't need in for coin now a huge one that you're going to want to make sure you seek out and do are contracts a lot of people don't do enough contracts so some contracts you will acquire early will be way out of your depth and will have to use side quests or main story naturally to level up just to do the contract and be as close as possible to the level recommended to even attempt that contract Guys, make sure you do that. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about jumping into a contract that's 10 levels ahead of you. Just think you get money. There's all kinds of contracts. Just search out for one. Come back to that one later because it's just going to frustrate you and be time consuming. Believe me. Now, you will earn more coin in contracts and it is something you are most desperately going to need and save up on in the beginning of the game and as you progress through mid game. As time goes on, it will be easier to acquire coin, but it is very easy to blow all of it on crafting gear sets or weapons, which is only honestly is one of the biggest reasons for needing lots of coin is for crafting i don't recommend buying crafting items you guys if you can help it uh everything is out in the world unless it's something you need that's not very expensive if so it's better to wait and grind out collect more of whatever crafting item that may be but i don't recommend buying or spending too much money because some of these things can be really expensive Especially just starting off or just mid game in general, you only have a limited amount of coin on you already. It's not worth spending it on crafting items unless you really need it because it can be very expensive. Now, the second tip I have for you guys are side quests. Side quests can also be great for coin and earning really good loot, but most of all, XP. A lot of people like to beeline the main story. Side quests, guys, it really will go a long way for you. As long as you're not doing quests beneath your level, especially 10 levels beneath you, unless you're doing it just to complete it because it will give you very little XP. But it's good to do as many side quests as possible because some will disappear on you and you'll lose out on doing that said side quest if you progress too far in the main story. But also there are more unique side quests that you'll come across where you will receive items that you will use to help you out on your adventuring like uncovering illusions that may have loot or chests hidden behind them or you know will need for future quest lines you can come across one side quest or a chain of side quests that you may do and get uh, an item that you may use for a future side quest later on so that's why it's good to do a lot of side quests if not for that definitely for the XP it'll definitely help out in the long run another tip I have for you guys is hoarding crafting materials and dismantling I can't stress this one enough because a lot of people I know like to sell their crafting materials for extra coin I really don't recommend doing that unless you have a a lot of that same exact crafting material now the loot that you're gonna obtain through side quest contracts or just on your adventures like say monster brains monster tongues or powdered monster tissue all the way to ruby dust and silver ore for crafting armors and weapons or things like for alchemy say wyvern eggs or basilisk venom and lunar shards just for example are better off left to be kept for future crafting and you can dismantle these crafting items into smaller items for example if i were to travel to my nearest armor or weaponsmith 
I would be able to dismantle these items like say Foglet teeth. I would get a monster tooth or elemental essence. I would get monster essence So hold on to these items if you're short on coin It's better to find a contract than to sell crafting materials Why you may ask is this important? Well, you will need a good amount of these crafting materials as you progress through the game and to continue to craft armor and weapons most importantly Witcher gear sets which brings me to my next tip Witcher sets there are six total sets for being part of the base game. Now, a lot have asked for mid-game builds and where they should use their ability points best. Well, I have an answer for that, and in all honesty, I can't stress this enough, guys. Play how you want, meaning if you're new and it's your first playthrough, don't worry about getting the perfect build off the bat, because if you do beat the game and make it all the way to the end game, by the way, which is level 100, you're probably going to reset your ability points many times until you get a build you like. So don't worry if you mess up, because there there is a potion in Novigrad called Potion of Clearance that will reset all ability points. If you need help finding the location, I have a video on how to do so. I'll link that down in the description. But with that said, I recommend collecting every Witcher gear set by doing scavenger hunt quest lines in your treasure hunt section of your quest log. Always search merchants and blacksmiths for maps or letters that will lead you to Witcher gear pieces. So all that coin that you end up building up if you see any of these maps they got like exclamation points sometimes in like merchants or blacksmiths buy those because that can unlock more scavenger hunt lines to get more witcher gear pieces now the best thing you can do is find each witcher gear set according to level like if it's closer to your level if you're a level 10 then i want to always recommend trying to go out and you know collect a level 18 or really high level gear set only because sometimes you might end up having to fight someone or a monster that can be very frustrating if you're under leveled. So tip, wait until you're a little closer to that gear set level, but once you get that gear set and craft it and then wear that said gear set until you level higher and find or acquire the next higher tier Witcher gear set, for example, you can see here I'm a level 12. I'm wearing base tier Griffin armor, right? which in my opinion is the best armor you can have early and works well with signs if you're going for that type of build. If you look here, I made this spreadsheet to show you each Witcher gear set and their levels of when you can actually wear them, you can craft them anytime, you just won't be able to wear them until you hit said levels. Now, at the very start of the game, Garrett will be wearing his Kaer Morin, um, uh, yeah, Kaer Morin armor that if you check in the crafting, you can upgrade it to a better version until you level high enough to reach level 11 and craft the base griffin armor or find a different non-witcher armor until then if it's something better than the Kaer Morin armor. Now the next higher tier witcher gear set that you can craft after the base version of the griffin armor is not enhanced griffin. It's the base tier cat school gear set. This is a light armor compared to the Griffin or the Kaer Morin armor that are medium armor. Now, even though the cat witcher gear set is a light armor, it has more armor compared to the base Griffin set. You follow me so far? It has different stats like higher attack power and since it's light armor and stamina will replenish more quickly since it is light armor. But just don't get hit too much, you know, if you're wearing light armor. Then right after the bas uh, base cat gear set, at level 18, the next higher tier Witcher gear set would be the enhanced Griffin gear set. Then as you level up and hit level 20, you can then craft your same uh, Witcher gear that is heavy armor, but hopefully you get my meaning by crafting each armor according to level. And wear that armor until you increase in level to wear another higher tier Witcher gear set just keep moving up so you're going to start off with the griffin then you can move to the cat then you go back to the griffin then you go to the Ursaean armor you see what i'm saying then you can go to woven armor when you finally get that and upgrade it just keep going as time goes on especially if you're a new player because if you're trying to just you know make a certain build and you're still wearing you know the base griffin armor and you're waiting to hit level 18 to wear the next one it might be really difficult for you only because you know a lot of these enemies or monsters are going to be a lot higher power than you are and you're not going to be dishing out as much damage so think about that just craft and just go as you please and then once you get closer to end game that's when you can really focus on certain gear pieces Pieces or gear sets to turn into a really good build but um 
With that being said, uh, there are other Witcher gear sets, like I mentioned, the Woven Armor. Um, even though you have to be, all you have to be is a level 14 to craft a base Woven Armor, you will not be able to access Kaer Morhen until you pro, uh, progress through the main storyline or the Manticore Armor in Blood and Wine or the Viper Armor in Hearts of Stone. With all that being said, if it's not your first playthrough and you are looking for a specific build or you're going in knowing, hey, I want to make just a sign build, then Griffin Armor is your going to be is going to be your best bet. The Griffin Armor gives you the best perks and its stats for increased sign intensity. Plus, in your yellow skill tree, there is a perk called Griffin School Techniques. If equipped, then each piece of medium armor increases sign intensity and stamina regen by 5%. It's okay to apply points strictly to a build you're going for. I just tell all newcomers. Go through each Witcher gear set as you level because not only are they stronger as you level, but gives you a chance to experience each gear set. That's why they did that because each gear set plays a different way. Like Griffin, um, best to focus on using signs. Cat, set on, uh, focus on attack power and poison if you want to mix up that. Your saying is uh, set focused on combat and being more of a, a tanky build, I should say. It's going to be a lot slower, if you notice. Uh, so many different ways, you know, there's going to be so many different ways that you can play each one of these sets. And these are just some examples, by the way. Instead of looking online for the best and strongest build, because honestly, there are a lot of builds that which some people I know today are making that no one thought of, or at least not out on YouTube videos for people to copy and try try so like i said guys play how you want go through the game that way that's the best advice i can give you guys but speaking of signs now that you've progressed further into the game and use signs more frequently my next tip is going to be a quick short one and it is on how to swap signs without having to actually pull up your ability wheel on screen you can either if playing on a mouse and keyboard use the center wheel hopefully you have one of those on your mouse will cycle through each sign or if you're using a controller Hitting the left trigger using block and holding the left trigger, you can now use the left and right arrows on a D-pad to cycle through your signs. Now, you have to be in combat for this to work, guys. Only I would say if you need to slow down time for a second and choose your sign, then pulling up the ability wheel is still a good option, but it just makes it much nicer to cycle through signs without breaking immersion in the game. For some, it will take some getting used to. Now, the next tip I have for you guys is putting a couple points in acquired tolerance. This is because it will increase your maximum toxicity so you can drink more potions and or decoctions. If you've already found many alchemy recipes, then this can easily get more than 200 max toxicity. This is a very useful skill and highly recommended using it because you'll be using a lot of potions and decoctions the further you progress, especially in New Game Plus. Now, next on the list, since we are on the uh, subject of alchemy, always look to upgrade your oils, bombs, potions, and make sure you're crafting decoctions. I can't stress this enough, you guys. Mutagen, uh, mutagens are also in alchemy and something you're really going to want to start getting into and experimenting with, especially, especially when you make it further down towards endgame. Um, to really get your builds to that OP level, but that's more down the road, honestly, because once you play Blood and Wine and unlock the new mutation skill tree, that adds to Geralt's, uh, Geralt's already existing tree. It will change your build drastically. So get used to crafting and messing around with muta uh, mutations, but out of everything in alchemy, I would say, in my opinion, decoctions is one of the best things you can gun for and invest time into searching for the essential materials to use in crafting decoctions. There are so many different decoctions that can help you in so many ways. For example, um, here are some like uh, wyvern decoction that each blow landed increases attack power until either the fight ends or damage other than that from the toxicity is taken. Or tawny owl that accelerates stamina uh, regen uh, in combat for 5%. Tawny owl is a uh, great decoction to use if you're going for a sign build that helps you span signs more often because you're going to be building your stanimal back up even faster or if you're using abilities in your combat tree that burn through stanimal quickly you can see a lot of these decoctions can help in or even out of combat as well now the last tip i have for you guys is to start acquiring diagrams to craft runes for your weapons and glyphs for armor crafting higher tier runes or glyphs 
can and will go a long way to help you give not only your weapons but your armor better or great perks but seriously help give an edge in your builds for example if i'm focusing on an igni build then i'm going to want to use a glyph of igni that increases the intensity of that sign on my armor the greater the glyph the higher the intensity same goes for runes on weapons certain runes can increase chance of burning or freezing so the greater the rune the better chances of doing whatever said rune you want to use whether it be stagger stunning an enemy freezing poisoning or burning i recommend this because working on getting these diagrams early will make life easier and help you create powerful builds towards end game but all of these are mid game tips for you to work on and not to stress out on making the most perfect op build asap it's mid game you're supposed to be building up your character but out of everything this is what i recommend focusing on to help progress through the game better and trying out like how to change signs without pulling up the action wheel but i hope these tips help you guys all out and if you guys ever need any help be sure to drop a comment down below i'll be sure to help you guys out the best i can if i can't get there fast enough there's always someone i see helping others out in the comments as well you guys can follow me on twitter at hambone gaming and that is all i got for you guys in this video it's been long enough so i will catch you guys on the next one Later.